Hi folks, welcome to my channel, I'm Sarah and in today's video I'll be diving into the world of coloured pencil and talking you through how I drew the cute little kitten you saw with those big blue eyes and fluffy fur. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're new around here please consider subscribing to my channel where I post twice weekly videos on all things art related. Hit the bell icon too if you'd like to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. For the kitten portrait today, I've started out with an accurate outline sketch in pencil on the Fabriano Artistico hot press paper that I've been using over the last couple of weeks. The coloured pencils I'm using today are the Faber-Castell Polychromos, but all the tips and techniques I mention can be applied with whatever colour pencils you have at home. I'll put a list of all the art supplies I used today in the description box though if you want to go and check them out. Before I start drawing, I do take some time to study my reference image and swatch out the coloured pencils I need for each area. I also make sure they're all nice and sharp. I like to start my animal portraits with the eyes and begin by outlining the darkest part. This helps define the area straight away and gives me a clear idea of the boundaries I have to work within. Putting in this darkest area also helps me to work out the range of values I need to achieve the right amount of contrast and depth in the finished drawing. At this stage I also fill in the pupil before moving on to tackle the iris or coloured part of the eye. I like to start in the centre of the eye and work my way out. I'm only using a very light pressure on my pencil and work in circular motions to fill in the tooth of the paper. This is where having a sharp pencil can really help. I start to lay down light layers of the colours I swatched out for the eyes, building up the area gradually. In this example today I've worked on both eyes together but you can concentrate on one first before starting on the next, but it's entirely up to you. It's also important to note where any highlights are in the eye at this stage because being aware of these areas and having them well defined will really help to simplify colouring in the iris in the initial layers. Getting that contrast right between the darkest and lightest areas of the eye will mean the difference between an eye that looks a bit flat and lifeless to one that looks shiny, realistic and 3D. With the first colours laid down, I now use a layer of white colour pencil all over the area to blend out with. I'm using a Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil as I don't much rate the Faber-Castell one, but use whichever you prefer or have to hand. I'm still using a light pressure when I'm applying the white colour pencil so as not to damage the tooth of the paper. I still want to be able to add further layers on top and pressing down too hard or burnishing with the white colour pencil could make this more difficult. I'm still also using circular motions with my pencil to really smooth and blend this base layer. I really like using white coloured pencils to blend with but it does tend to lighten up your drawing, so for the next part I'm going back in with more colour, and it's at this stage that rather than just using small circular motions with my pencil, I start to put in a bit more detail to the shaded areas within the iris. I do this by looking at the shapes I can see from my reference picture. I continuously check back and forward with my reference pictures because at first glance you may just think that the eyes are blue for example, but when you look closely eyes are rarely if ever just one colour. The eyes in this reference picture, although blue, also had browns, oranges, greens and even purple hues to them, so it's really worth studying that reference so you don't miss anything. If you have trouble eyeballing it then there are some good apps which you can download on your phone or tablet to help you but you will get better with practice. Now to make the highlights in the eyes really pop I don't just leave them white so when the rest of the eye is done I turn my attentions back to those highlighted areas and add in various blue tones to make them look really shiny. I then finish off the eyes by adding more definition and colour to the area around the highlight and then finish off by blending out with my white colour pencil. With the eyes done it's time to move on to the nose and just as with the eyes I begin by laying down a light layer of pale flesh colour to form a base layer. I then start to build in some darker values to the insides of the nostrils and on top of the nose, still keeping my pencils nice and sharp and being careful not to press too hard on areas that I want to build up. As before I use my white pencil to blend with before moving on to the next layer and I continue this process until I've got the hues and the values where I want them. While shading the nose, I also fill in details carrying on downwards towards the mouth.
then it was time to start putting in some of that fur and I began on the area of fur above the cat's nose. The fur here is super short so to convey this accurately in your drawing it's important to use really short pencil strokes to match and to follow the direction the fur is growing in as well. Generally the fur above the nose points towards the middle of the cat's head and will curve around the eyes towards the ears but again study your reference photo to make sure you're rendering it accurately. Next I start working on the lighter area under the cat's nose and I begin here by putting in a very light grey layer of coloured pencil to act as a base. The fur, although it appears white in my reference picture, still has grey, pink and yellow undertones to it, which when added lightly in layers will really help add interest and life to your drawing. Now before I begin the main body of fluffy fur on the cat's face, I first want to define the eyelids and white area of shorter fur under the cat's eyes. So for the longer fur now, I'm going to start mapping it out in sections, working one area at a time. And for this I'm using my light grey pencil again. The fur is longer here, so I'm using longer pencil strokes in the direction the fur is growing in. And I'm going to layer these strokes down lightly and flick or lift up at the end of each stroke to get nice, fine, natural looking fur. Before I go any further though, I'm going to use my embossing tool to mark out where some whiskers are going to go. This tool has a fine metal rounded end so it doesn't cut the paper, but when you press down on it, it indents or makes fine grooves in it. I can now start to layer in some of the lovely orange tones to the fur using a sanguine coloured pencil and again using lots of light flicky strokes. I'm also aiming to erase any of my original pencil marks that I don't want visible on my finished drawing. So the idea with the embossing tool is that when you go over the grooves with your coloured pencil, the coloured pencil doesn't lay in the grooves, revealing fine white lines that make really effective whiskers and fine fur details. Once the grooves have been made, you can easily then erase your pencil guidelines to reveal perfect white lines, and these will become more visible as we build up darker layers of fur. With colour pencils there are lots of different methods for drawing whiskers and I'd love to know which ones you've tried and what method you find easiest or most effective. I do have an idea for a colour pencil drawing with whiskers that might be quite fun and I was thinking about doing it in a video next week. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in by leaving a comment in the box below. In the past, before using this embossing tool, I've either tried leaving the white of the paper free for whiskers, which is a bit fiddly, or using white gel pen over the top at the end of the drawing, which is quick, but the gel pen doesn't lay down super well over coloured pencils. So this embossing method is both a quick and easy way to achieve some really nice results. And as you can see, once you've used the embossing tool and put the grooves in where you want the whiskers to be, you can just simply erase your pencil guidelines. And this leaves those whiskers really bright and helps them to stand out on the page. Now it's time to add some colour to the ears, and whilst some coloured pencil artists completely render one area at a time, I like to move around my drawing a bit, as you may have realised but that's personal preference, so you work the way that best suits you. The ears of this kitten are very pale and have a lot of different colours in them, which was really fun to draw. I begin by putting down some pale flesh and some light grey and build up to the more orange and pink tones afterwards. So now it's time to start adding some depth to our fur and we do that by gradually adding in more layers and gradually going from our lightest colours to our darkest colours. 
Layering like this is the best way I've found to create depth to fur when using coloured pencils, but it can be pretty time consuming, so make sure you allow yourself lots of breaks so you can stay focused and do your best. And if you don't want to start on a big picture straight away, then why not practice in a sketchbook or just on some scrap paper? That way you can practice the techniques and get more confident with what you're doing before you tackle a bigger picture. And as long as you remember to keep your pencil sharp and pay attention to the length and direction of your first strokes, you can achieve some really realistic looking results. Remember too not to make all your first strokes exactly the same if you're aiming for realism. Fur is a bit like hair, it doesn't all sit completely uniformly, so try and add a bit of variation within each clump to make it look more natural. That's one of the things I do really like about working with coloured pencils. You can get such sharp, crisp and precise details and draw so realistically with them. So far as this cat picture goes, I absolutely love doing the eyes. But interestingly, I didn't think I'd got the colours right, as in the reference picture, they'd looked much bluer than I'd drawn mine. It was only when I added the orangey colours of the fur that they really stood out as blue, and I realised that made sense since blue and orange are complementary colours. I think that's why the reference picture appealed to me in the first place as well, with a huge variety of pinks, purples, blues and oranges that you might not think would be there. So having a good reference picture is really important in being able to create a good final drawing. I did also really like using the embossing tool in today's picture and I think it was pretty effective. The only caution I would add if using this tool is not to use solvent to blend your coloured pencils with it as it'll probably fill in the grooves the embossing tool has made. This is also the case if blending with tissue or similar as it will also push the coloured pencil into the grooves and you'll lose that fur or whisker detail. That said, for the soft fluffy area underneath the cat's neck, I did end up using some tissue to blend it with because I thought that was a really nice texture that I wanted to achieve and I was aware of the issue with covering up those embossed areas so I tried to avoid them. In that way I could get the best of both effects so I got the soft fluffy fur underneath the neck but still managed to maintain those crisp sort of feathery lines that I wanted to achieve with the embossing tool. So now we're onto the final layers and the picture is really starting to come to life. For the darker fur areas I added burnt sienna and Indian red which both really contrasted well with the blue of the cat's eyes and helped to further add depth and contrast. For the neck of the cat the fur was much softer and fluffier looking and there was less defined fur detail looking at the reference picture. There was also a white area on his chest which showed shades of pink blue and purple so I made sure to lightly layer those in and blend with a white colour pencil. So now like I said I'm just coming in with a regular tissue just to soften out some of those areas and make them look really fluffy but do as I said be careful that if you're going over any of the areas where you've used the embossing tool you could push the coloured pencil over them and lose that detail so try and avoid doing that if you want to maintain those nice bright whiskers. Another thing on whiskers, there were quite a lot of whiskers going onto the white of the paper which I couldn't actually get to show up with colouring them in dark. There were a few dark whiskers which I filled in but that was something that I didn't get to do completely. I could have done a dark background but I was really liking the white of the paper. So I was just adding a few more details in with some darker pencils, really helping to push those whiskers out and soup up and hype up the contrast. One thing I did do at the end was just to go over and use some coloured pencils just to kind of glaze areas where I wanted to slightly change the, the colour a bit, so areas under the mouth and um, on the neck and that kind of thing but overall I was pretty pleased with how it turned out.
So now just glazing over the, the sort of the salmony colour as I said, just to kind of gradually change that value just a little bit and give it a bit more interest and life. And lastly blending it all in with that coloured pencil just to pull it all together and make it look nice and soft and fluffy. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you've enjoyed um, watching how this little cat piece came together and maybe even you've learned a few tips and things for your own coloured pencil drawings. If you like the video give it a big thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.